So, Cal, we've got lifeguards, models, actors, muscle beach. Hell, everyone here is fit. So would it surprise you that SoCal is also the home of fast food? Let's take a quick look at fast food and Wiener Schnitzel today on PCZ TV. PCZ TV. McDonald's, Carl's Jr., Baskin Robbins, Hot Dog on a Stick, Tommy's, Foster's Freeze, Pink's, Fat Burger, in and out Taco Bell, Del Taco, Panda Express, and Wiener Schnitzel all started down here in SoCal. Well, that's a lot of fast food for um, healthy Californios. Well, well, first, let's level set. I mean, we all know what it is, but what is it? What, what is fast food? The Webster Dictionary describes it thusly. It's Restaurants specializing in food that can be prepared and served quickly with little consideration given to quality. Well, based on this definition then, it's not like fast food is a new idea. For instance, the vast majority of people in ancient Roman cities didn't have kitchens, so they would have to buy their food from street vendors. And this was especially popular outside the Colosseum. In the Han Dynasty? Well, they had noodle stands open 24 hours a day. And Europe had its own fast food, even in the Dark Ages, where street vendors sold pies and pasties and whatnot. I mean, well, I could go on, but that's not really fast food as we know it now. Wikipedia adds some more insight. Fast food is a commercial term Limited to food sold at a restaurant that was frozen, preheated, pre-cooked, and served in packaging for takeout or takeaway. Well, looking at modern fast food, that definition kind of yes and no. So let's look at the modern fast food. Let's jump to 1921 and see the origins of fast food. Well, the first fast food hamburger chain is White Castle in Wichita, Kansas. Now they featured a limited menu, high volume, low cost, high speed hamburgers. And that's the way things sort of stayed until World War II ended. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. It was really the post-war era in Southern California that spurred on what we now know today as fast food or a quick service restaurant, QSR. I mean, look, the state of California even has a web page dedicated to all the local fast food chains. <laughs> Take that, Kansas. <laughs> fast food was really born from the new highway system that we built in the 1950s and 60s. See, Americans started driving more than ever before in we rearranged our cities out west based on car travel, for better or worse. Well, nowhere was designed more around the auto than SoCal, which spread out over a huge distance. So, following from this, it was a natural business response to the American on-the-go kind of lifestyle that restaurants began to change. In the 1940s, drive-up service was provided, which expanded in a time with waitresses on roller skates or other mechanisms. Now, for the next logical evolution, and sidebar, Wikipedia has some conflicting info on this, but they claim that the first drive through was 1947 in Missouri. Doubtful. But in either case, it was adopted by In-N-Out in 1948, and the advent of the drive through meant you never had to stop driving, ever. Yes, yes. <laughs> the final great evolution was the franchising model. Now, while not invented by Ray Kroc of McDonald's fame, you could argue that he perfected the formula. It provided for consistency in food, service, branding, marketing, and consumer expectations. 
And now we get to the legal definition of fast food. Ah, uh, oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Are politicians paid by the word? Let me just summarize this. Fast, convenient, inexpensive, limited service, franchised, standardized branding. Thus, all the elements came together for the modern definition of fast food. And look, we're busy people here. Things to do, places to go, people to see. So naturally, these establishments were a huge hit. Now today, we're going to focus on a South Bay's very own homegrown fast food. Wilmington is the home of Wienerschnitzel. It all started when the founder of Wienerschnitzel, John Gallardi, was working for Glenn Bell. Glenn Bell of Taco Bell fame. Well, even before Taco Bell was Taco Bell, back when it was still Taco Tia. Anyway, John ran a store and eventually he was able to buy that point from Glenn, but with a caveat that he not compete directly with Taco Tia. Now, this is interesting because most fast food is burger or taco based, but John wanted something different. So, what to do? Now, at the time, there was the Santa Monica based hot dog on a stick, started in around 1946 as Party Puffs, but eventually they changed the name a few years later to Hot Dog on a Stick to focus on corn dogs. And up in Hollywood, there was Pink's, also started roughly around 1946. So when you look at it from that perspective, not a lot of dogs down in the South Bay. So opportunity. And hot dogs it is. And the name? According to John's son, the name Wienerschnitzel has some funny origins. Apparently John and his wife were at dinner with Glenn Bell and his wife, and John floated the idea of naming his new establishment John's Hot Dogs. Just as Glenn Bell had previously named his hamburger and hot dog stand Bell's Hamburgers. But then Bell's wife chimed in, with, I was looking through a cookbook today and I saw a recipe for wiener schnitzel. How about that? It's got wiener in it, which is another word for Frankfurter. How about der wiener schnitzel? Um, well, actually, a, a true German wiener schnitzel is a dish of pounded breaded pork cutlet. I'm sure this really confuses the Germans to no end, and... Okay, I'm going on a lame here, but I've got to think that booze played a small part in this. Anyway, John thought that the foreign sounding name would stick with American consumers even though I can never spell it. And so, Der Wiener Schnitzel was born. Although the Der portion was eventually dropped. But John was a great marketer. He was looking for product differentiation. So, with Bell's permission, he spent time adapting the Taco Tia chili recipe until it was perfect for his hot dogs. His chili dogs. And the chili, ah, oh, chili. The son of John, uh, J.R. Gallardi, who is the current president and CEO of Wiener Schitzel, I didn't say that right, said, quote, we live and die by our chili. What we say we're a hot dog brand, but in reality, we're a chili concept that sells platforms to put chili on, which I think is fantastic. And not gonna lie, you are so right, it is so awesome. Pro tip, you can buy cans of their chili in the store to bring home with you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was distracted. And we're back! So all the pieces are falling into place. And now, John needed some seed money, and like many of us starting out, turned to his parents for a loan. And now it was time to build. And in 1961, and at the age of 23, he opened Der Wiener Schnitzel for business. Now, in his time at Taco Tia, Gallardi had learned that many teenagers, with their newfound freedom in cars, could be a rowdy and destructive group. 
His solution was a drive through only restaurant, which back then was still a relatively new idea, but it worked on keeping destruction from the young hooligans to a minimum. So his first location, which is still in Wilmington, is still predominantly a drive through and also a recognized landmark. Swing by and take a trip back in time. Well, time for John to franchise. And again, he looked for a unique marketing it and found it in the architectural design of Bob McKay. Now, Bob had designed the Taco Bell adobe-style restaurants, and for Wiener Schnitzel, he created an A-frame-style building with walk-up service in front and drive through right through the middle of the building, all inspired by Alpine chalets. Of course, first it's German, and it's Swiss. I mean, what's next? Elbonian culture? <laughs> yeah. Weird. Weird. But anyway, the design proved a hit. And now for something completely different. Oh, fun sidebar. Uh, Jackson Brown, well, of Jackson Brown fame, he also wrote a huge hit for the Eagles, where he recounted his experience standing in front of a Wiener Schnitzel in Winslow, Arizona. It's your ride. But he was actually standing in front of a Wiener Schnitzel in Flagstaff. And a Wiener Schnitzel A-frame is now the doghouse, uh, repurposed after they sold it, which uh, will be a recurring theme. But wait! There's more! So marketing-wise, they dropped the dirt in 1977 and changed their logo thanks to legendary designer Saul Bass. And as I mentioned earlier, they moved away from the limiting A-frames, which, by the way, can now still be found to house all sorts of weird and different restaurants and whatnots. They also launched a hot dog mascot, affectionately known as the Delicious One, a.k.a. TDO in 1999, who uh, ran until 2008, and then they brought him back again in 2014. J.R. Gallardi must have learned innovative marketing from his dad, as he branched out to sponsor everything from the Joe Gibbs motocross team, the Toyota RAV4 rally team, to Travis Pastrana in a NASCAR, all designed to attract a younger and different demo to the store. Okay, not gonna lie, full confession, this is one of those secret vices I have because I love Wiener Schnitzel. Oh, sure. It's probably not like eating a bowl of kale. But the basic dogs, the chili, the fries. Uh, I totally sneak these when my wife isn't looking, so don't say anything. Now, John passed away back in 2013. But his wife and then his son took over the mantle. And they've kept the business in the family. And that is pretty cool in this day and age. Wiener Schnitzel now sells over 120 million hot dogs each year. And their moniker is the world's largest hot dog chain. Not too shabby for a small hot dog shack started in Wilmington. For more reading about John Gallardi, the Wiener Schnitzel website offers a free downloadable book. And if you've been watching this far, I'll probably meet you at the local Wiener Schnitzel and have a dog. Thanks for watching. Bye.